well. So what did you learn in terms of working with people, you know, from a day-to-day -day basis, working with, because uh, there's a lot of producers on, on mm. this film, and, mm. there's, you know, there's, everybody's got an opinion. How mm. do you manage all of that? Mm. Um, diplomacy is the watchword, I think, uh, right. at, this, at this point, right. really. Um, really. And uh, you learn to, in part or, or, or not, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, and one of the big, I mean, one of the big things to me, and, and I'm just extremely grateful that, you know, Thin Films uh, came along and uh, for this in regard to... Uh, and you're talking about Rez now. Yeah, one Rez of the and, and Ollie led with as well, and uh, came along and, and raised the money yeah. for the film. Because these guys are city guys that decided to get into films in a smart way. You, yeah. you do hear horror stories of city people thinking film is just a normal straight invest well, Re investment that goes yeah. horribly wrong. I mean, Rez, Rez and, uh, and Claire, they have, a, have a, a banking background. And um, if there's one thing that, uh, uh, that I have learned over this, again, it's about the assumptions that we make about people. We constantly have a challenge in life. We're constantly... You know, we make assumptions about whoever we meet, and and that's wrong. Yeah. And we need to work at that. And there is nothing, there is nothing wrong with. It, there's nothing wrong with money. Yeah. We have to work through how we earn that yeah. at times, and of course, bankers, for various reasons, sometimes totally understandable. We may have a particular view over the last couple of years and think, yeah. what have they done with the money? Yeah. But. Um, I, I have learned a heck of a lot in regard to the business side of things and their, you know, and their particular approach. And yeah. I, I do feel that we can learn a heck of a lot. When you have a situation like the, we've had, where you have this sort of business-minded banking side meeting the artistic community and... It's a clash of the titans. Well, <laughs> yes and no. For some, maybe. For others, no. And there, and there, is, a gel, and there is a good gel there. And I think... Um, we we need to, we can learn a heck of a lot in that in this situation. So so Rez and, and the guys, the banking guys, really understood how to work with creative people, how to manage those people to get the, the most out of it. Or, or was it a, a will, culture will, shock to the system? Well, I, th um, I think it has at times been a uh, culture shock, and I will push the again push the diplomatic button at yeah. this point. And um, you know it. Yeah, because, because if you, you come from a particular banking background, there are certain things that you wouldn't do, you would do. You would look at, um, you look at the risk. And, and to be honest, I mean, I, I well, you know, I'll say this. I go on, on live internet TV and say this now, where, you know, I remember a conversation with, with Rez saying, if, if you feel concerned about this, then, then don't put the money here. Don't do it. Mm. Um, and walk away. And to his incredible, incredible credit, he didn't listen to me on that train journey from Manchester. Right. And I and I respect. I totally respect that because right. it, you feel as though you're rushing. Once you release the the uh, the horse out of the stable, there is no way you know you can yeah. put it back. And you've got to go with it. Right. And um, and and all credit to that man. Okay, so just to, to, we're coming to the end now. It's, the sus has been held over for another week. Where, yeah. where can people see it in London? We can, you can see it at uh, the Apollo in Piccadilly. Right. And I just want to say thank you for all those people that have gone. And please, please, please go and see it again. Um, we are being, our second week, I suppose, officially starts on Friday. Right. So if people can go... Friday, so the, Saturday. That's the key, isn't that's it? That's the key is, thing. Is go Friday, Saturday, and yep. Sunday afternoon. Yep. You know, and don't wait. Don't say oh, it'll be held over another no. week. It probably no. won't be no. if it's and, a low-budget film. And just film. go. And I mean, last, last, thank you. You know, last Wednesday, uh, uh, last night, Tom White, the first AD, took ten of his mates. You know, and there's the cinema is is full. Yeah, it's half full. So that that is incredible. And it's just le it's just using that. So right. as I at the moment are saying to friends, go go at the right. weekend. Right. Okay. So I'm just going to uh, go over to Laura now and ask if there's been any questions from the chat room. There has been a couple of questions. Okay. Um, first one is, how did you get permission to film a play? How do we get permission? How do you get permission how to do film we a get play permission written to... by Barry Keith? Is that just basically a personal relationship? That is a personal relationship. Right. Um, so it's, it's important to point out here that 
already Barry Keith knew Clint, is yeah. that right? Yeah, yeah. And, and there were already relationships. Mm. So maybe this conversation happened down the bar one mm. night. Hey, we should turn it into yeah. a film. Yeah. And boom, boom. Yeah. Yeah. So I think, you know, that's quite unusual, mm. isn't it? Mm. You know, unless you have that existing Again, it's that classic of it's who you know. But you've still got to deliver the goods. Yeah, you know. But that is part of the business, isn't mm. it? It's about expanding your mm. network. Mm. You know, people often say, "Well, you were lucky because you knew that person." Well, actually, I know a lot of people, yeah. so I get more lucky with more people but, I know. But absolutely, and also, I wouldn't be here bluntly if I didn't know didn't know you. But it's keeping it's getting I'm those. I'm so sorry, mate. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, not at all, and I'm I'm grateful for to be here. But. But it's about those relationships, and and that's the key. That's yeah. that's the art. The answer. Okay. And any other questions, uh, Laura? There was another one um, from Mikey B, which is: assuming we can't afford a really nice studio, what sort of location should we look for to build a set or a series of sets? Dep depending on uh, what what your uh, story is. I mean, I've often thought about this at the moment. Um, there's a lot of empty industrial units going just outside various towns, I mean, I think where, where I live, over uh, Croydon Way, um, that, some of those units, they're desperate to rent, you know, that is right. a good idea. Sound is always an issue, as I know when we found an urban ghost story, um, yeah. doing, doing that in a tin. But um, that is, that's quite a big thing, really. Okay. Any final questions, then? All right, one more from Steve D, which is, how did you get your first feature film um, shown at the Apollo? Um, right. The lead up to that was a, a brilliant uh, marketing strategy from uh, Clint and Rez in getting the uh, getting the film shown at Soho House and inviting um, distributors, buyers along. So, um, fantastically, um, independent have taken have got the UK theatrical. Eric came along from there and and just said, right, you know, I want to take this on. And so it went from there and mm. plugging at Apollo. I mean, there Gen Genesis in Bethnal Green and, very, and Mile End Way, I'm very grateful for that. That was personal contact. Do you think to some degree it's, it's Rez because he has a business background and he said, you know, this is a product, I have to sell it. And, and really wouldn't accept any less and, and looked at the market without any baggage, without any kind of preconception about mm. how diff mm. he, he almost mm. didn't know how hard mm. it is. Mm. So he just went and did mm. it. Mm. And, uh, and, and uh, a huge compliment to that kind of thinking. You are absolutely right. Um, it is, we have to think in a product. I mean, we know, I could be totally talking off cuff here, but it's the way the Americans view their film industry. They view it as product, you know, and say, right, where's the next product? Where's the next one? Where's the next one? Right. So we have to think, think like that. You're absolutely right. Right. Well, look, uh, thank you, Mark. I'm going to ask you my final question, which I always ask uh, everybody. <laughs> what, what piece of advice would you offer an emerging filmmaker if you had one piece of advice to impart to them? Right. This is the second time I've said it, really, in recent days, is look at having a number of different strings to your bow to earn a living and take the pressure off. Do not give up your dream but take the pressure off by being able to earn your living in a number of different ways. Right, you need you to know. be able to multitask and multitask bring the cash, can do cash it. in and that, some way. Absolutely. I mean, you know, it's funny, you don't actually need that much money to survive. Mm. Um, I, personally, I've, I mean, I, I completely uh, chime in with that. And the first thing to do is to look at your life and cut away mm. what mm. you don't need. I mean, there's what you want, there's what you mm. need. Mm. And they're very different things. Mm. Um, and that's the beginning of, of, you know, most filmmakers I know anyway, they're already operating in that place, living as paupers. Yeah. But having the freedom to be creative. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and that... That is the key. That is, I mean, you know, I have I have mortgages and uh, and a, a brilliant family. You know, that that's we have. I have those responsibilities. Okay. You know. Well, thank you, Mark, for sharing all thank your ex you. exploits and, and wisdom with us. 